Hey guys, uh, Trump's been shot. He uh, was, uh, it, it looked like a BB gun or something. So I'm pretty sure we all knew this day was coming. We just didn't know when it was going to happen. But have you seen all the unhinged public reactions? We're supposed to jump up and feel sad that the guy who is one of the most yes. divisive presidents in all of history got shot at? Fucking give me a break. Please Two give people? me a fucking break. Okay, one person is dead who isn't Trump, right? Who got shot out. Someone in the crowd that was just wait, going wait, wait, to wait, a wait, rally wait. who got okay, fucking wait, murked I'm sorry, by this wait, guy. Wait, and wait, two I others are in critical condition. I think it's okay to show a little empathy. Don't you? You're right. Hold on. I'm sorry. I didn't know somebody else died. What state was this in? Pennsylvania. My state. Swing state voter. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sorry, what? That was more staged than a Tyler Perry production of Medea Runs for President. This was, I believe, done to try to show his strength counter to Biden's fragility. But would that really be necessary? Biden's fragility is in stark contrast to every living thing on this planet. Didn't she watch the debate? Trump doesn't have to do anything to make himself look stronger than Joe. Anyone can do that. And there's no need for bloodshed just to prove it. So after I saw those clips, of course YouTube started suggesting more and more of them. And eventually I ran into this guy. Uh, heard the news about the attempted assassination, yada, yada, yada. The people who were injured, apparently two were injured and one died. I don't know anything about them. I would like to assume that those were decent people who meant well, even if they were totally statists. And, like, I actually care about them getting hit. And oh, well, how noble of you to actually care about a filthy statist. You might have thoughts, like I did, which is, well, let's see. Who could milk this and benefit from this? Now... Obviously, the picture of Trump there with blood and Secret Service trying to hold him down, but no, I'm brave and fighting the blah, blah, blah. Well, there's an awesome political propaganda point. Look what he's standing up against, and look what our enemies are doing. You have actually good snipers. You kill a couple spectators, because we don't give a shit about them if you're slave smith. And then you fake it and, and make it look like he got hit in the ear or whatever. So that side of the propaganda machine can totally benefit from it. And by the way, it is totally benefiting from it, right stinking now, regardless of what the actual cause was. We can make him look like this brave hero who's standing up for America. He didn't give a crap about you any more than he did two days ago, which was absolutely zero. He does not give a crap what happens to you. Trump doesn't care about you or America or freedom. He cares about Trump and Trump and Trump and Trump. And also Trump. So I want to be very clear. This guy's video is like half an hour long and I watched the entire thing, but I've only pulled out a couple of points that he made throughout the entire video. And he's not actually saying that this is what happened. This was just one of three possible scenarios that he believes are the most likely. The first scenario was that the shooter acted alone. The second one was Trump staging his own assassination attempt. And the third one was the Democrats. And I just want to say this guy is not dumb. And I actually agree with about 75 to 85% of everything he said. The trouble is, I don't think he's been paying very close attention. And he even confirms that himself several times in this video. And I knew, like, none of the details. I mean, I still know none of the details. <laughs> like, I know what they're saying happened, but it's like, mm, okay. Maybe some of that is what happened. I don't freaking know, and I don't freaking care. He also mentions repeatedly throughout that he cares about how people think and that he wants to help everyone understand how to figure things like this out, all the while being incredibly arrogant and insulting. And if you're thinking, oh, you think they would do that, if you don't think they'd do that, you're just a gullible idiot. You're just a crappy investigator. If you don't start with who had something to gain, all right, you're never going to know the truth. If you're going to know the truth, first you have to want to know the truth. Part of being a good investigator is ruling out possible scenarios that require too much speculation and too many assumptions. And they rule out possibilities not based on evidence or logic or motivation, but just based on, I don't want to have to think about that. So don't stink and fall for that shit and learn to actually think. So first off, I'm no Republican and I'm really not all that conservative, but I am indeed a Trump voter. But I'm also a nut job conspiracy theorist. So when I first saw the pictures and the videos of the attempted assassination, even as a Trump supporter, I wondered to myself immediately, how did they get such perfect images from that event? 
And since I'm a conspiracy theorist first and a Trump supporter second, I indeed had to ask myself, is it possible Trump set all this up just to make himself look good? But it only takes a few seconds before that entire scenario just falls apart. Because in order to believe that, you'd have to also believe that the media and all the politicians on both sides suddenly decided to help Trump. Because there's no way he could get away with faking this by himself. Plus, the idea of Trump putting himself in front of a live weapon, knowing that he's at least going to be wounded. Yeah, that seems a little unlikely. And to fake the entire thing, like even the bullets weren't real, it was all just special effects and AI, and all those spectators who uploaded videos of their own accounts are actually guilty of making deep fakes and uploading them to the internet. They're all in on it too. So yeah, I think logic and reason can eliminate that scenario right off the bat. So of course, I couldn't help myself but to post a comment on this video. And I must admit, I was quite annoyed with how much time I wasted watching this video. Because he meandered around from topic to topic, repeated every point multiple times, and treated his audience like they were dumb, assuming they knew nothing about Operation Northwoods, the origin of false flags, MKUltra, 9-11. But his knowledge of conspiracy seemed to stop right there at 9-11. There was no mention of Benghazi, or Spygate, or the fact that the entire government media and Hollywood have all been weaponized against Trump using the very same tactics they've always used against us. And it seems really hard to believe that someone could be so arrogant and look down their nose at you while still believing somehow that Trump is secretly part of the deep state. Now, I have plenty of complaints against Trump because he is absolutely an authoritarian collectivist, doesn't believe in freedom, doesn't even believe in the Constitution, not even the lower level of statism. If you want to wield real power, you must be willing to do what most consider unthinkable. Yes, I agree wholeheartedly with that statement he just made. Those who wield that kind of power certainly do things that we consider unthinkable. This is very true. But that's also where the problem lies for him. Somewhere along the line, he lost interest and stopped caring. And he no longer has the want to find out what's actually happening. And I was 100% blackpilled just like this guy in 2016 when Trump was running for president. And I didn't believe Trump. I didn't vote for Trump. I also didn't vote for Hillary. But in order to continue down that path, I would have to ignore the fact that all those unthinkable things he was talking about that the government and the media do to us on a regular basis were now being done to Trump. I mean, all you have to do is take a look at the Bush administration. It doesn't take a genius to see a difference between Bush and Trump when it comes to dealing with the media and the Democrats. Bush played a friendly game of ping pong against the media and the Democrats. And it was quite evident that they were all in cahoots with each other. But if you don't see the difference between that and the way they treat Trump, then I just think you're not paying attention. Now, you can continue to make the argument that Trump is deep state. But I have a hard time respecting you over that. Because most people weren't even familiar with the term deep state before Trump mentioned it. He turned it into a household name during that whole FBI scandal. You know, the one with Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. How does it make sense that Trump would expose the deep state only to try and cover it back up again? Wouldn't it be easier to fool the masses if you kept the idea of the deep state out of the public? Again, this just doesn't make any sense. These are just ideas that come from someone who can't fathom the possibility that Trump isn't evil in some way. So at this point in the conversation, YouTube began deleting my comments again. I don't know if that sort of thing has ever happened to you, but my comments get deleted almost as soon as I send them many times. So I don't suppose I'll ever get this guy to tell me how Trump is a warmonger. Because YouTube won't let my comments get through. But even when they did and I asked him questions, he still didn't answer them. And whether or not his channel is monetized may seem irrelevant, but I don't think it is. Because YouTube is happy to pay him and serve his videos up to me in my recommended list. Because he hates Trump. The only way you can be a Trump supporter on YouTube is if you also toe the Republican Party line. But if you never mention Trump, or if you just straight up hate the guy and express it often, then YouTube will be happy to pay you and spread your videos around. So you could say that this guy's message has been pre-approved by the Slavesmiths. I really don't think I would like being beholden to YouTube for my paychecks. It sounds like a really bad idea. But again, I asked him that question twice and I never got an answer. Something tells me he knows what I was driving at. So the one on the left there is in response to a reply that I made. Unfortunately, YouTube deleted it. 
so I don't have a screenshot. But basically, I believe what I was trying to say was, I can never know what Donald Trump's true intentions are. All I can do is make an educated guess. I see the current administration doing all the things they said Trump was going to do, like rounding people up. Do you realize how many Trump supporters have been put in prison for doing nothing more than trespassing? Some of them weren't even there. To say that this election doesn't matter is to be completely oblivious. And as far as the comment on the right, this was another response to a reply that I made that YouTube deleted. In it, I mentioned inflation. I talked about how Joe Biden had printed more money than any other president and how my grocery bill is out of control. And I suppose it sounds like Republican talking points, and that's fair. You know what? They probably are Republican talking points. But if talking points are true, I guess I just don't care. And I don't know why this guy is so against voting. Even if you're an anarchist, who cares if you cast a vote? Some people seem to have so much concern about what everyone else is doing all the time. If I want to vote, I don't need to explain it to this guy. He can't even explain to me why I shouldn't vote. This crap about the ruling class? I don't care about that. I'm not rich, but I'm certainly no slave. I have no money, and I live like a king. And anyone can. It's all about what you value in life. But since we're talking about inflation and the stimulus checks while we're at it, the only reason we got stimulus checks under Trump is because the Democrats wanted a bailout for all their special interest groups and buddies. The reason it was postponed for so long was because Trump said, if you guys are going to do that, then you're going to give a portion of it to the American people. Did Obama do that? Did Bush do that? No. Bush bailed out the airlines and Obama bailed out Wall Street. And the Biden stimulus checks didn't exist as far as I know. I've heard people claim that there were multiple Biden stimulus checks. I remember qualifying for it, but I never got one. So Trump was the first president to actually try to bail out the American people. And you're still going to find fault with him somehow. <laughs> and calling him a dictator, come on, man. Could you be more of a Nancy Pelosi right now? And as far as the wrestling comment goes... Yeah, I've seen that Jesse the Body Ventura video too. Politics today, and you'll hear me say that to the crowd today, politics today is pro wrestling. It is pro wrestling, and you know what I mean by that? I mean by that that the Dems and Repubs in front of you and in front of the public is going to tell how they hate each other and how they're different, but as soon as the cameras go off in the back room, they're all going out to dinner together, they're at, and they're all buddies cutting deals. It's just like pro wrestling. In front of the public, we hate each other. We're going to rip our heads off. But in the locker room, we're all friends. Are you suggesting professional wrestling is fake? I'm suggesting <laughs> politics is fake. And I agree with it as well. But the only thing about that, wrestlers don't get assassinated. You know what's interesting about assassination? Well, not only does it change those popularity polls in a big fucking hurry, but it's also interesting to notice who it is we assassinate. It's always people who've told us to live together in harmony and try to love one another. Jesus, Gandhi, Lincoln, John Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, John Lennon. They all said, try to live together peacefully. Bam! Right in the fucking head. Apparently we're not ready for that. So YouTube sent me a warning about my comments. I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong, but whatever it was, it must have been serious because they said they would delete my channel if I ever did it again. But trying to have a conversation with someone and having your comments constantly disappear kind of makes communication impossible. So that's the reason I made this video. Apologies for how long it's been since my last one, but I will be back soon. In the meantime, one more thing regarding professional wrestlers. But what happened last week when they took a shot at my hero? And they tried to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let Trumpomania run wild, brother. Let Trumpomania rule again. Let Trumpomania make America great again. This whole right. thing is like this. And it, <laughs> what, 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 yeah, he's, hey, he's hey, listen. Hey, guys. Tonight. The last time I was in a convention that felt like this 
was Obama 2008. Yeah, you know, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's something happening yeah. 